Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another review video where I'm going to be reviewing Sunlight's Science C program and where this is forces and interactions, life systems and cycles, weather and climate and engineering design. So you guys, I, I love Sunlight Science, especially for the elementary years. There's so much exposure and delight and hands-on stuff. I made a whole video about how much I love Sunlight Science. I will link that above if you want kind of more details on that, but I really appreciate it for this age. Now, as for Science C, I'm not gonna be going through all the resources because that might take too long, but I am going to be hitting upon some highlights, some highlights of this year in particular that we really liked, that either my kids really liked or I really liked, some just kind of stand out moments from the year. So stay tuned if you are at all interested in more information about the Sunlight Science C program. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. Like I said, today's video is a review video on the Sunlight Science C program. But before I get into all the details and all my thoughts and all my opinions, I do need to say a quick thank you to Sunlight for sending me all of these resources in exchange for my honest review, which is this video. Now I have chatted my way through this program all year long. I've done update videos. I've done some day in the life videos, some like, let's look through all the resource type videos. And so what I did is I compiled them all into a playlist. I will link it above. It is a playlist that's kind of both HBLC as well as Science C, which my last video, I think my last video was my review for HBLC. So if you're interested in that program as well, I have a review video for it. Now, I do have a few more reviews coming as well. So my HBLK and my Science K, if you're interested in those programs. But we are talking specifically about Science C today, which again is geared for eight to 10 year olds or third to fifth grade. And my kids fit really well into those age ranges. My son was nine and a half when we started and my daughter was eight. And it's been just fine. They've been able to grasp all the concepts. Some of them have been a little harder. Some of them have been a little easier and I'll get into kind of how that went. But was it age appropriate? Yes, I think it was very appropriate for this age, especially since my main goal, especially in science, is exposure and delight. It's so much fun to talk about how our world is put together and all the intricacies of the forces and all the different interactions, like the different ecosystems and all of that. It's just really fun to teach. But let me stay on topic. So I want to talk first about the books. I'm going to talk about books, activity sheets, and experiments. I think those are my main categories, but first the books. And so the highlight for me for this year with this program is just the fact that I love teaching science through literature, you guys. There's just nothing like it. Yes, there's encyclopedias that we use, and then there's more kind of story-based resources that we use, a both book form. It really brings attention to the topics without getting too bogged down with details but also not just kind of brushing the surface either. We spend some time into these main topics and I love that Sunlight has kind of almost three main topics every year. And so by the time you've kind of gotten through one topic, you're kind of tired of it. And then you move on to the next one. Like you'll move on to like electricity and magnetism after we've spent a ton of time on like ecosystems and things like that. And so I really appreciate that. I think it works well for my kids. By the time they're getting tired, we are moving on to something else. The next highlight, for me, especially as kind of a person with a PhD in sciences, I really appreciate Sunlight's goal of including NGSS standards or next generation science standards. To me, that matters a lot. And they're in the process of revamping all of their programs to include these standards. And we've only used the revamped programs and I'm super impressed, you guys. I really like the fact that they are geared towards following what standards there are in science because science standards are important but also following kind of trends like the emphasis on steam or or stem and engineering and things like that and they have not only included those kinds of resources but those kinds of thinking that that way of thinking especially when it comes to experiments but i have gotten ahead of myself let me talk about the books so like i said i appreciate the fact that we are able to use literature and we're able to use both like an encyclopedia type resource, as well as some that are a little bit more story format, such as like Magic School Bus or some of these other ones. We had some of the What Makes a Magnet and Fossils from long ago. It just kind of tells a little bit of a story. There's some kids investigating some things. And so it just makes it a little bit more 
like tangible and interesting to my kids. So we have a good balance of that, but we still do have important encyclopedia books that just kind of lay it out, which is really important for just kind of basic knowledge and then to go a little bit deeper into some of these books. Now there was one book that I felt maybe was a little bit advanced and that was this one. And it's the traits and attributes talking about genetics. Now, what's funny about this is I love genetics. I taught genetics at a college level. I love it. So nothing in here did I not understand. I understood it all. It just was kind of highbrow, honestly, for these ages. And so we were able to go through the stuff. We were able to read some of it, but I was always kind of on the fly explaining it. And I feel like that would have been much harder for me without my background. Now, maybe other people were able to kind of roll with this a little bit better, but I felt like it was a little advanced. And I feel like that's been the case for almost every level we've done. There's been always like one resource. I'm like, oh, that's a little bit much. But again, like I was talking in my HBL video, what I love about Sunlight is that they set the bar high. Like they're trying to make sure they have enough resources for all level of children for all level of interest. Like, and so if you have a really sciencey kid, something like this might really pique their interest and they need this. And other kids might just kind of more want the magic school bus at this age, right? And you can meet the needs of all of the different kids. And as their teacher, I can kind of draw back and summarize as needed. So I'm not like upset about that book by any means. It's just kind of something I noticed and wanted to mention. But as for what I would say is my favorite kind of living book resource, this one. Oh my gosh, this was my favorite book of the year. Now I will share my kids' favorite books of the year. It wasn't, they didn't pick this one, but this was from really early on and they tended to pick ones from kind of this semester. But I love this. This book is Bringing Back the Wolves, How a Predator Restored an Ecosystem. This was phenomenal in its higher level critical thinking. The ability to see that you take one thing out of an ecosystem and how did that affect all other species? How did the reintroduction of said species, the wolves back into Yellowstone, how did that affect things? How long does it take for things to shift? How long does it affect the population size? Or like, how long does it take to rebuild the populations? All of these things. And I love that we talked about like bugs and trees and other animals. And on top of that, it is a stunning book. It is so beautiful. And I know that's not the most important thing, but it is a really big plus in my book is to have resources that are just beautiful to look at, that are just really fun to engage with and to have my kids read and look at even after we're done, they pick this book up, they really enjoy it. And so that's an example of a living book as opposed to maybe more of the encyclopedia type books, which here's a good Usborne one about oceans and water and things. And I realized I forgot to mention which books were my kids' favorite books. And it was these two. So my son loved this robot books. Actually, my little boys did too. They really enjoyed the robots book. And then my daughter loved this book, The Story of Inventions. She loved this. This was actually the day five book because I did use the five day program. And so I loved that one. And for me, my favorite was the wolf book, which I already talked about, as well as the biography. You guys, I always love the science biographies. I love exposing the kids to scientists and exposing them to their kind of life and their interests and how they became scientists, how they really persevered and tackled a problem they were curious about, even if they had some pushback and resistance from like the scientific community or something. And this one was great. This was Electrical Wizards, How Nikola Tesla Lit Up the World. And my son really loved the electricity section of the program. And so we kind of deep dived into this and watched a lot of documentaries. It was, it was pretty fantastic. So those were the book resources. Now, what Sunlight does different in its science programs versus its like history Bible literature is there's not necessarily discussion questions. And we're not gonna discuss, you, you do kind of, especially with certain books such as this, there's more discussions, but it still comes out in the form of the activity sheets. So there's activity sheets that go along with all of your readings and it's assigned on kind of your grid, your instructor guide grid as to which activity questions are covered in that day's reading. Then you go to the activity sheets and we tended to still do them together. Even for science, see when I had a uh, like third grader and a fourth grader. We did them together, although I was working on my fourth grader taking a little bit more, writing it a little bit more, kind of being able to read the question himself 
and figure out what to answer. And so a lot of the questions were connect the concepts or put this in the right order, but there were some more like take it deeper questions. And so this is where it came to more discussion. And this is why it felt so sunlight because it's not just a worksheet. It still has that like, let's take it a little deeper. Let's take what we learned and talk about it, which is just, it's just literature based learning right at its finest. And so I really did appreciate the activity sheets. Okay. The next part of the program, the next major part was the science experiments. And here is the book. So this is the third grade science experiment book and it is full color. It is very well described as to what you are doing and it follows along really well with what we're learning. And so since the redesign, I would say more often than not, the experiment follows the reading, or at least it's tied into the same topic. In some way you're learning something about what you've been reading about. Now, did our experiments always work? No, some of them just tanked terribly. Others were just spot on. They really taught the concept and really made it come alive. Like I think we did one on like beak size of birds. We had an experiment of trying to pick up different things with different instruments. One that was like more like a tweezers and ones that were more like a scoop beak. And so they had to kind of practice and see that like, wow, that was hard to pick these things up. I can see why these types of birds only eat these types of seeds. But I would say I have three experiments, which I might have some pictures to go along with these, but three experiments that my kids loved. It was a light bulb one when we were doing that electricity section and it was trying to get the light bulb to light up and what would conduct electricity and things like that. He loved it. It was a small little light bulb and it would turn on and off and we got that one to work. And so that was really fun. Another one that was really fun was they had to make a meerkat den. They had to design kind of how it would work with just like, paper towel tubes and different boxes and they got to figure out how a meerkat's den would look just based on what they researched. And this was an example of where the instructions were to go online with help of an adult and research meerkats and then design how you think their den would look. It was really fun. They really loved that one. And then like, I think another standout one was like the fingerprint one when we were in like the genetics section. And so all of these things were so much fun. Now, again, we didn't do all of them. Actually, we were amazing the first semester, like the fall semester, I feel like the first 20 weeks or so, I think I only missed one experiment because we started doing experiments on Saturdays, which really worked for me and my schedule just because science experiments are somewhat tiring. They need a lot of supplies and cleanup and all this stuff. And sometimes I'm just not energized enough to do that at the end of the day. So I started doing them on Saturdays and it worked amazingly well until kind of we had some more issues, kind of family health issues that derailed our spring a little bit. And that was one of the things that kind of got dropped was the experiments, but we still continued with the program. We just gave ourselves a little grace and knew we couldn't pick up as much of the experiments. Now, would I do them in the summer? Yeah, but probably not. I mean, I, I would say that yes, I would, but honestly, I feel like we just, you know, need a break and so that's okay. But would I change anything? Um, I mean, not really. Like I was saying, like I need a better experiment rhythm, but that was more on me than the program. And I already mentioned that one book that was a little challenging, but that's okay. The one thing I would add more, maybe myself personally, is more documentaries. And the instructor guide often did send you to documentaries if you looked at some of the extra content. And sometimes I forgot to look. And I really wish I would have because adding those documentaries or adding those visuals was really helpful. My kids really like that. But I think I just need to kind of prep that a little bit more ahead of time. We'll see. But irregardless, do I love Sunlight Science still? Yes. Are we going to use it in the future? Yes. It's just a really big hit for us. It keeps science really fun. It keeps science where we're just being exposed to all of these things. Later in their schooling, they'll go and dive deeper and they'll have to kind of understand it at a deeper level, but should they in elementary? No, not in my opinion, at least, not in my opinion. Even though I have some sciencey kids, I still feel like this is the perfect level for them. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it was useful if you are considering the program. Let me know down below if you have any questions. And like always, I do include an affiliate link down below in case you are curious about this program and you want $10 off your first order. It's there. It's there for you if you want it. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video, which should be probably some more sunlight review videos. And so I hope you're enjoying these. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right.
Take care.